When we talk about maintenance needs for parakeets, we're talking about two things. We're talking about how you maintain their environment, like how you keep it clean, and then we're also talking about the maintenance needs for the pet. So let's talk about the environment first. Birds are going to dirty up their environment, they're gonna poop, they're gonna have their feathers and their seed husks that fly around inside the cage, and all that will need to be cleaned. So depending on the type of cage, if you have a vision cage, the dome pops off and you can easily dump the base. Other cages are gonna feature a tray that slides out. What's in the bottom of your bird's habitat? For most people, you can do the crushed corn cob. See, so it looks almost like gravel. And it's literally the inside of dried corn cobs that they crush up into like a gravel looking material. It's uh, moderately absorbent uh, and it will probably be about three days per between changings. What this will allow for though is if the bird drops some seed or some food down into the, into the bottom of its cage, um, this kind of will help provide a media that they can forage in. They can kind of like pick through this to find any food bits that they've dropped. So that's kind of nice. Um, don't leave it there for more than three days because it is a natural product and if you let that get wet, you have some risk of molding. And that would be true of any kind of bedding. Now once you have dumped whatever you've put in the base of the bird's cage, you're gonna notice that there's like feathers and poop and stuff on the cage itself. So we talked about how birds are very sensitive to things that they would inhale. Uh, so you have to be very careful what kind of cleaner you use. So we have this enzyme-based uh, Moss Hollow Tweeters Habitat Cleaner. This is an enzyme-based cleaner. This is safe to use on a bird's habitat, and you don't have to worry about the odors that this produces harming your pet bird. Your bird should not be in the habitat while you're using this. This is another good argument to have a playtop stand or some other safe place for you to put the bird while you're cleaning the bird's um, house. So literally, you will just dump the base, get any big debris that's stuck on there that you can see off, and then spritz the whole thing down, let it sit about five minutes, and then just wipe away with like a paper towel or a microfiber towel till it looks clean. The enzymes in here are gonna break down the bird poop because bird poop is, um, once it starts out liquidy when they poop it out, but then it turns into like a cement. So this is gonna help break that down so you can wipe it away without too much scrubbing. And it is gonna make the whole habitat smell nice when the, the process is complete and it's bird safe. So this is a great thing for any kind of pet bird or a small animal as far as giving you something good to clean the habitat with. So that's for your maintenance as well. If you only provide a little water dish for your bird, sometimes a bird wants to take a bath. In nature, when it rains, the bird's gonna jump into a puddle and splash around and take a bath. So instead of having them do that in their water cup, it's good to provide them with a separate dish for bathing purposes. And you don't wanna leave this in there all the time because it will get dirty. So we would say maybe three or four times a week, put um, not quite hot, but pretty darn warm water in here and put that into the habitat. And this is a nice dish to use. They have some plastic ones that actually look like a bath and that would be a good one to use. I like this one because it's, um, it's actually for small animals, but it's non-tip. So when the bird sits on the edge of this, they're purposefully gonna be flapping around and it would be an unpleasant thing if the whole dish were to flop over on the bird. So this non-tip one is nice. It's ceramic. You can dishwasher it if you wanted to. Otherwise, you use that uh, habitat cleaner to clean it off when it's soiled. But warm water in here, set it in there for, you know, a few hours and the bird will jump in and take a bath and have a good time with it. And what this will do for your bird as well, when they're bathing, it gets some of the dust off. It'll also soften up new pin feathers uh, because the feathers come in like a little um, wax spike the wax gets loose and then the feather opens up kind of like an umbrella and now you have this feather. So the bathing process will help kind of hasten how these pin feathers break open to actually form new feathers for your bird. So that's a good thing to use. Now, nail maintenance is a thing that you have to do for your bird. And you know, you can trim a bird's nails. Uh, we're gonna show you how to do that. The other alternative though would be an emery perch or an emery swing. So the specific perch is one example. They also make them where it's a wood perch coated in sand. Either way, it's an emery perch. So you bolt this onto the side of the cage. So this part's in the inside of the cage and the bird is going to have a good time 
um, they'll actually use the, both their beak and their nails, and as they are walking on this, it's going to have a natural filing action on their nails. So that's the Pacific perch. If you've got um, a more traditional, maybe old school style cage that's got the wooden perches, you can make every perch an emery perch by using these sand perch covers. Now realize that whereas the beach walk thing probably lasts you a year or more before it's worn smooth, this is just like little sandpaper sleeves that go onto your bird's perch. The sand does not stay on there forever. So you're probably replacing these eh, every, every month, every other month, you have to feel them. If they don't feel very rough anymore, it's time to replace them. So that if you're gonna use these, just keep that in mind. Then when, when we come to the actual maintenance elements of owning your pet bird uh, for the animal itself, we talked about the bathing process that will help with the feathers and the molting to a degree. You then have the wing trimming. So wing trimming can sometimes be a controversial topic. You are not permanently removing the bird's ability to fly when you trim their wings. The flight feathers are all that you're trimming and those feathers will naturally grow back every two to three months. So the value of having your bird's wings trimmed is that the bird has to learn how to interact with you. It can't escape you, so they have to learn to deal with you. Birds that are fully flighted are much harder to tame, and it's a little bit more of a game for the bird because they can just get away. And in your home, a flighted bird that's unfamiliar with the environment is at risk of running into windows, running into walls, running into mirrors, etc. And, and those, those situations can be dangerous for your bird. They could break a wing, they could become injured in other ways. So especially initially, we would recommend you keep your bird's flight feathers trimmed so that you don't have these issues happening. So we're gonna show you how to do that in a moment. The other thing that is a regular maintenance issue are the nails. So we talked about the emery perches. They also make emery swings. But if you actually have to do the nail trimming, this is the type of nail trimmer you use. And then this is the powder you would have on hand because if you happen to trim too deep and there's that little blood vein in the nail, you need to stop that bleeding quickly. A parakeet does not have a lot of blood to lose before it becomes a problem. So that's what this Nick Stop powder stops the bleeding right away. So let's show you how to do this actual maintenance for your parakeet. So with our parakeet, we're gonna use a towel to make this wing trimming experience a little bit less frightening for the bird. And you'll note that when we're holding the bird in the towel, we are not squeezing very hard at all because it's not as though the parakeet is gonna muscle his way out of here. Uh, so we're not super worried. When we hold the wing open, the motion is that you're kind of cupping the bird's body with your hand and fingers, and then you're gonna hold his wing between your thumb and your pointer finger. You're gonna hold it open so you can access his feathers. So now in that, with the bird in that very same position, we can fan out his wing. Now this bird, his feathers are partially grown back. So what you have here, you have your flight feathers and then these feathers up here are the secondaries. We never trim super deep in to where the secondaries are at. We're only trimming flight feathers, which are gonna be the first uh, between six and eight feathers from the top of the wing down. Now something that we wanna be aware of is that new feathers have a blood supply and you do not want to trim what's called a blood feather. And you can tell a blood feather, we'll flip them over, we can tell a blood feather because it will have a pink shaft. Now none of these feathers here, come on bub, he's like leave me alone. None of these feathers have a pink shaft. White shaft, white shaft, white shaft. So those look okay, those look okay to you? Yeah. If we had a blood feather, you would not only skip trimming the blood feather, you would skip the feather next to it as well. So that way it has some protection because if you just left, like if this were a blood feather and we trimmed everything but that blood feather, if this bird flaps his wings and whacks his wings on something, he's gonna break that feather and it's gonna bleed. So again, none of these are blood feathers. These are all good to trim. So now, best done as a two person job, one person to hold, one person to trim. Good practice to use a very sharp scissors. So now we have our bird's wing open. The bird is secure. We are going to trim his extra flight feathers.
The feathers are trimmed. And so that did not hurt the bird, it's just like a haircut. Now we'll rotate the bird, so now he's on his back. I will fan this other feather, or this other wing out the same exact way, and we'll take a look at that wing and see if it needs to be trimmed as well. All right, so now we have this, and none of these feathers look like they're blood feathers. None of them have a fat pink shaft. They're all white shafts, so we can trim that wing. Voila! Now our bird has trimmed wings. The other maintenance thing that we can look at would be nails. We have our parakeet still wrapped up in his towel so he's safe and secure. And if you look at this nail here, you can see that part of it is distinctively quite pink. And then the tip is kind of just a yellowish white. And so the tip is the only thing that we would trim off. Now again, if you have an emery perch, you might not have this long skinny part on there and you might not have to trim the nails at all. But this parakeet is young, and this would be his first nail trim, so we're going to do it. So we always will have our Nick Stop powder on hand in case we trim too deep. So this is the Nick Stop powder. If the bird's nails were to be trimmed to the point where he would be bleeding, this will stop the bleeding right away. It will clot right away, and it will make it safe so that the bird doesn't have continuous bleeding after his nails are trimmed. All right, so now with the assistance of our helper, we will trim this bird's nails. <laughs> Voila. And just like that, the bird's nails are less sharp. Voila. And so that's what they look like when they're done being trimmed and none of them bled because we are really good at this. So now one thing can, that sometimes happens is the bird will clench up. That's why this is helpful to have one person to hold, one person to manipulate the little fingers so that way you can get in there and do it. We get him. So sometimes if you're not quite sure whether or not you hit the quick, if you touch your little fingertip to the nail, you can see if any red's coming out because it's going to be a very thin little bead. So then a little bit of powder on there and then a little bit of pressure and the bleeding stops right away and we can continue with the other nails. All good. So trimming the nails for your parakeet is something that you're probably only going to be doing every two months or so. So it's not going to be a very frequent occurrence. So those are the maintenance needs for your parakeet. If you have any questions about those maintenance needs, please ask your pet counselor.